Let's see the first flow control protocol, the stop and wait protocol. We will start the session with the outcomes. In today's lecture, we have two outcomes. We will see what are they. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one, understand the working of simple stop and wait protocol. And outcome number two, we will understand the problems with the stop and wait protocol. We will start with the various protocols of flow control mechanism. We know there are protocols for flow control pertaining to noiseless channels and noisy channels. Simplest protocol and stop and wait protocol are the flow control protocols in noiseless channels. And stop and wait ARQ, go back and ARQ and selective repeat ARQ for the noisy channels. In today's lecture, we will be focusing on the stop and wait protocol. Let's start with what is stop and wait protocol. We know very well that the stop and wait protocol is a flow control protocol where flow control is one of the services of data link layer. The first point is the stop and wait protocol is a data link layer protocol for transmission of frames over noiseless channels. And then it provides unidirectional data transmission with flow control facilities. But this protocol will not focus on any error control facilities. Unidirectional data transmission means either sending or receiving will take place at a time. Both sending and receiving will not happen at the same time. That is why this stop and wait protocol is referred as a unidirectional data transmission flow control protocol. And what is the idea behind this stop and wait protocol? The idea behind the stop and wait protocol is very straightforward. It is after sending one frame, the sender will not send any other frame and it waits for an acknowledgement before transmitting the next frame. Suppose if there is a sender, the sender will send exactly one frame and the sender will not send any frames before receiving an acknowledgement. That is the idea behind the stop and wait protocol. Let's see what are the primitives in the stop and wait protocol. The primitives of stop and wait protocol includes the sender side and the receiver side. There are very simple rules for the sender side and there are very simple rules for the receiver side. In the sender side, rule number one is just send one data packet at a time and that's it. And rule number two, send the next packet only after receiving the acknowledgement for the previous packet. The idea of stop and wait protocol in the sender side is very, very simple. Just send one packet at a time and don't send the next packet before receiving an acknowledgement. And what about the receiver side? Just receive and consume the data packet. Once the receiver receives the data packet and consumed, send the acknowledgement to the sender. After consuming the data packet, acknowledgement need to be sent. And this is what the flow control mechanism is. I hope now you are clear with the flow control mechanism of stop and wait protocol. Let's see it with an animation. Suppose if there is a sender and there is a receiver, and sender will send exactly one packet and that packet is the data packet. And sender will not send any packet before receiving an acknowledgement. Now the receiver will send the acknowledgement for the data packet that it has received. After receipt of the acknowledgement, the sender will now send the next packet. Once the acknowledgement is received for the next packet, the sender will send the next packet. And this is the process of stop and wait protocol. The main advantage of stop and wait protocol is its simplicity. But the main disadvantage is that if it has 1000 packets, then all 1000 packets cannot be transmitted at the same time. So one by one it has to send, it has to wait for the acknowledgement before sending the next packet. So there are some problems with the stop and wait protocol. We will see what are they. The problems associated with stop and wait protocol. The problem number one is the problems due to lost data. Suppose if the sender sends the data and this data is lost. So what happens? The receiver will be waiting for a long period of time for the data. Since the receiver has not received the data in this case because the data is lost, it will not send an acknowledgement. Since the acknowledgement is not received by the sender, it won't send the next packet. The first problem is problems due to lost data. Here the data is lost. The sender waits for an acknowledgement for an infinite amount of time. Since the data is lost, there is no chance for the receiver to get the data. So it can't send the acknowledgement also. So here the sender is also waiting for an infinite amount of time for the acknowledgement. 
and receiver is also waiting for an infinite amount of time for the data. So that's the first problem. Now let's see problem number two. The second problem is the problems due to lost acknowledgement. In this case, the sender has sent the data and the receiver has sent the acknowledgement but here the acknowledgement is lost due to some problems in the network. So what happens? The receiver will be waiting for an infinite amount of time for the acknowledgement. There is no chance for the sender to receive the acknowledgement because the acknowledgement is lost. So there is no chance for the sender to send the next packet because the idea of stop and wait protocol is it won't send any packet before receiving the acknowledgement of the previous packet. So the problem number two is the sender is waiting for an infinite amount of time for the acknowledgement. Let's see what's the last problem of stop and wait protocol. The last problem of the stop and wait protocol is the problems due to delayed acknowledgement or the delayed data. It means the sender has sent the data and this is the timeout in the sender side. So till the timeout, there is no chance for the acknowledgement to be received by the sender. But the receiver has sent the acknowledgement and this acknowledgement is received by the sender very late. And there are chances for the sender to wrongly consider that this is the acknowledgement of some other data packet. So the problem is due to the delayed acknowledgement or delayed data. That is after timeout on the sender side. Here this is the time it has sent the data packet and this is the time it can wait for the acknowledgement. So after timeout on the sender side, a delayed acknowledgement might be wrongly considered as an acknowledgement of some other data packet. So this is the third problem. Let's see all three problems together. Problem number one, due to lost data. Problem number two, due to lost acknowledgement. Problem number three, due to delayed acknowledgement or data. And that's it guys. I hope now you are clear with the working of simple stop and wait protocol and the problems associated with the simple stop and wait protocol. I hope you guys enjoyed the session and see you in the next lecture. Thank you.